Synthonous Art. I am your host, Rob Lee. Uh, and this is the first installment of this, this special series we are calling uh, Podcasting in Place. We're here today in the Communications Hub, uh, Communications Exhibit at um, the Baltimore Museum of Industry. And today, um, I'm privileged to be in conversation with uh, three guests. Um, first up, we have uh, Graduate Program Director of Community Leadership at the University of Baltimore County. Please welcome uh, Dr. Uh, Sally J. Scott. Mm, welcome to the you. podcast. Thank you very much, Rob. It's great to be here. Thank you. Um, next up, we have the director of the Schreiber uh, Peace Worker Program, affiliate faculty, uh, legal literacy and culture, advisor and instructor, community leadership at UMBC as well. Please welcome Dr. Joby Taylor. Welcome to the podcast. Thanks, Rob. It's really nice to be here. Likewise. Thank you for coming here. And lastly, but not least, uh, <laughs> we have a creative uh, cultural organizer with over a decade of experience in program design, environmental advocacy, uh, strategic partnerships, and the director of events and programs at Waterfront Partnership. Please welcome Leanna Wetmore. Welcome to the podcast. Thank you. Thanks for including me. So now I got all of that out of the way. We're done, guys. Hi, everybody. Else. <laughs> <laughs> um, but again, thank you all for coming down and, and making the time today to be a part of the, this inaugural, this, this maiden voyage, as it were. Sure. Um, and we're off the water, so that works really well, right? <laughs> right. Um, so to start off, I'd like to do that sort of introductory origin story sort of question. Um, could you give us a bit of your, your background, a brief overview of your background, and some of those pivotal moments that shape what you're doing today, shape the work that you're doing today? You can start off here with you, Sal. OK. Thank you, Rob. Yeah, well, I, there's a lot of history there, but I want to focus in on those pivotal moments, as you suggested. Um, so I grew up in Wilmington, Delaware, southeastern Pennsylvania, um, in a pretty privileged, pretty white world. Um, but it's also a time of great social and economic ferment. We're talking late 60s and 70s. And I think I always knew there was something beyond what I was experiencing. And kind of started to understand that better in college, um, you know, with, with courses in American study literature and history. But really what, what I think really opened the door for me was going um, into the Peace Corps. Um, I was in Senegal, West Africa, and uh, had kind of this phenomenal experience of living in a village of 300 people, learning, um, learning the language and culture and feeling very welcomed there. And I think that exposure to community organizing, to cross-cultural um, you know, relationships, yeah. and get doing things you know, together with people that ostensibly are very different than me, but finding common ground sure. there. And I think that really, uh, really shaped the rest of my career um, which focused on community development, initially internationally and then domestically. Um, I ended up working for many years in Baltimore, housing, affordable housing, community development, and spent a few years in the Midwest as well. Um, and then had the great good fortune of very recently getting the position as director of the Community Leadership Program at UMBC, um, a position and a program that, that Joby and others created at UMBC, yes. where there's that fusion of my kind of love of community and engagement with community, but also with the academic um, study and uh, um, the um, you know, helping people who are just entering the field kind of discover their passions. And you know, the link with creativity for me is there's, I think, creativity is at the heart of any good community relationship or program. Yeah. You're always trying to imagine relationships projects, worlds that don't exist yet. And to do that, you've got to kind of draw on those creative powers. And for me, it's often a collective process. Um, I'm not the, the individual artist in the studio, but I love being creative with other people. And this um, program um, really gives me a chance to do that and to meet people like Leanna and others mm -hmm. at Waterfront Partnership Baltimore by Baltimore. And just to, just to see um, you know, Baltimore's level of creativity, which is over the top, it's fantastic. Thank you. We, we definitely have more creativity questions coming up. Thank you for that introduction. Joe? Yeah, well, you know, it's dangerous to ask this origin question to the 30 minute <laughs> podcast, Rob, but um, I grew up in a small town in Oklahoma, uh, Miami, Oklahoma, and um, I think uh, I continue to kind of, when I go home, keep, uh, you know, peeling back the layers of that experience. So I guess the one thing you should know about Miami, Oklahoma is that um, it has nine sovereign nations <laughs> located in my hometown. So kind of grew up immersed in a blending of kind of settler 
culture and uh, relocated um, American Indian uh, nations and uh, that my whole experience there was kind of blended and that's both a personal uh, and ongoing kind of um, story. So um, I think early interests in kind of just intercultural and cross-cultural exploring and those kind of what's you know universal about our human experience and what's uh, different and unique. Um, uh, some of those for me came in the form of like spiritual philosophical questions. I studied philosophy and religious studies for a while. I was a, a seminarian at a Benedictine um, mm -hmm. monastery and kind of went, you know, to a farm and you know, in uh, Missouri and lived with mm. the Benedictines for a couple of years, and that's still very formative. Um, actually, you know, maybe ironically, that's where my love of, like, interfaith and intercultural dialogue really took off and pursuit of um, kind of questions rather than as much as answers um, as kind of what drove me. Um, I also uh, served in the Peace Corps and lived in uh, Gabon, uh, Central Africa, for um, that time, and uh, just, you can imagine, more of the kind of Culture goes all the way down, you know. Like um, I have no idea what just is happening here, but um, <laughs> I'm just in the mix, you know. Um, uh, but developing, you know, this confidence that we can forge deep and meaningful relationships across all kinds of differences, even differences that feel completely mysterious or uh, kind of unchartered. Um, so that's also a deep part of me. Coming to Baltimore really was um, thinking about. Uh, um, how education can um, really be happen in the doing, you know, happen through community uh, collaborations and place-based experiences and service collaborations, um, and how learning um, is kind of can be infused into that, as well as um, trying to impact change and also conservation of you know community stories and things. So that's really what brings me here and I've been in Baltimore since the late 90s and um, cities were new to me at that point so I think I would say um, cities you know from that first moment it's just like what is a city that continues to be something that drives me to explore kind of personally as I've lived and worked in Baltimore for going on 25 years now and uh, that's come to you know um, a lot of uh, teaching experiences and just constant exploration here so thank you yeah. mm -hmm. Oh. I was not in the Peace Corps, but I always wanted to be. I always wanted to be. Um, I moved to Baltimore in 1997 to go to college at the Maryland Institute, so my background is fine art. Um, but uh, just under 10 years of being in Baltimore, I decided it would be a great idea to buy a house in a strong but undervalued community that at the time uh, through the Healthy Neighborhood Initiative. Mm -hmm. So I mm -hmm. sort of got my first taste of what that could be like. Um, fixing up a house. I, I imagined this for a very romantic creative process, but <laughs> it was um, a very long process that was, was wonderful. But what um, was really pivotal for me was that I became, I started to become really involved in my community and understand what a community association is and what it can do and meet a lot of like elders in the neighborhood and learn. I just learned so much after only being in Baltimore for 10 years at that time. And you know, I was still young at 27. Um, volunteering in my neighborhood and being on the community board and just kind of establishing like a sense of place and a sense of community mm -hmm. after you know a really long time of not having that in a bigger city I think that was a pivotal moment like how do I continue to create community and um, connect to my neighbors and so combining the um, art background with this really for this passion for community engagement and volunteerism, I wanted to work as a community organizer. And I just sort of got completely thrown in the deep end with no actual training. Mm -hmm. um, and so that was that was pivotal too. I think learn by doing. I think you said Sally or just, um, so I, I organized in the Bella Edison community for about four years and then and really all over East Baltimore for just over, well, I'm still organizing in East Baltimore. So it'll be about 15 years um, and using art as a tool for organizing so you know bringing people together by doing a mural or, or a garden project or a you know community sculpture or so I think art is just a powerful catalyst for um, 
engaging people mm -hmm. and then having people experience something together, that's, that's a really moving and memorable time. So that steered me. Mm -hmm. <laughs> wow, thank you all. And I think that's it's really funny. It's like it answered the first two and a half questions. <laughs> so, so thank you. Yeah, it works. It works. Making my job easier. Yeah. Um, so I, I want to, know, in a very brief sense, get a sense from each of you. How do you like define creativity and how perhaps it connects to community leadership? Like. I, we, we, each one of you kind of touched on that a little bit in your mm -hmm. introductory, but I really want to be concrete on that. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Want me to start? Please. To start off. Yeah, I think I, I started touching on the kind of collective nature of, of creativity um, for me that, um, you know, when I think about what is the purpose of, of say, our program, our community, organ yes. our community leadership pro program, or, you know, the kind of community organizing that... I think we've all done as part of our careers, and it's really to, to both understand and change the status quo, right? Something's not quite right. Um, there's an opportunity for change, and so for me, creativity comes into play by, you know, being able to first fully, you know, put oneself in the shoes of another and understand kind of what what is going on in the situation, but then in kind of collectively being able to think about well, what are other, you know. How, how could this be different, right? And you know, we we're all familiar with that kind of planning, strategizing process. But sometimes I think we underestimate how how critical creativity, you know, deep creativity, is to that. And there's, um, I think it works best when you know we can be um, kind of free and trusting and playful about it, mm -hmm. right? When we don't get bogged down in this, you know, mm -hmm. this is this is you know we're deciding the future, but just let ourselves. Think and experiment and roll with it and and kind of see where we see where we end up. So I think it's it's really to me very much rooted in those bonds, those bonds of trust between people that you have to kind of build almost before you can get to the to the fully creative part of community change. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I really think um, when it comes to like imagination, particularly. Um, these are this and creativity. My deep experience and sense is these are very fundamental human attributes. It's like it's what really defi defines us in many ways is uh, ability to juxtapose things in new ways. I mean, every time we open our mouths, we're speaking a sequence of a sentence that's very likely never been spoken in that exact mm -hmm. way before. So. Mm -hmm. um, most of my thought in terms of education and stuff has been that we, everyone's a creative, everyone's um, true, deeply imaginative at their core, and we've, in some ways, we've got to unlearn mm -hmm. this professionalizing of like creativity or imagination only belongs to poets and artists and this kind of professionalized tracking. And we're all, we're doing it all the time, and if we can try to um, both see it as a practice that we can cultivate um, as well as something that we you know instead of separating who is and who isn't that we kind of embrace it in ourselves so I kind of think every day I have to have outlets whether it's <laughs> cooking for my family or prepping lesson plans or you know moving around the city and trying to understand complex things you know our, our minds work in metaphors yeah. um, so Understanding that this is happening all the time, embracing it, finding our own ways of expressing and outletting that. But I, I really think part of it, the educational goal of mine, and really as a member of the Baltimore City, is to say, like, let's learn how to flex our imaginations in everyday life. You know, the way we see ourselves and the way we see the people around us. That's great. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I mean, well said, I, to both of you. I think I would just add to that. I think being creative, right, is giving permission to take some risks and try some new things. And mm -hmm. I think creatives are sometimes really exceptional at taking those risks. Like, there's nothing scarier than a blank canvas, right? And just jumping mm -hmm. into it. Mm -hmm. Or, um, and I think of the community work piece and and creating those. Um, Again, like for me, it's like building the relationships to be able to trust and to take some of those chances. So doing something together, and it could be 
it could really could be anything as simple as putting a plant in the ground or um, a building of painting together. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. That's great. Thank you. That's, mm -hmm. that's good. It's good. See, we're, we're, this is going well. This is going well. <laughs> <laughs> so, oh, oh, oh. <laughs> so I want to get into um, how, I, I guess, how we all are connected in a way here, right? Mm -hmm. I want to talk about VXP a little bit for those who, who aren't in the know. I want to talk about uh, Baltimore by Baltimore. So, um, could you, you know, describe Baltimore by Baltimore? I'm going to start off with you, Sally. Describe Baltimore by Baltimore. Like, what was the thinking? Um, like behind yeah. the festival, and um, ultimately, how did UMBC Waterfront? Pro how did everything come together? Well, I would love to have Leanna start us off. <laughs> and that's okay, yeah, oh. just because <laughs> she's, she's really, yeah, she's really um, at the at the origin story of this. I, I would say. Yeah, thank you for that. Thank you. Um, I guess I think you know just to back up a little, a little tiny bit too. I, with that experience as the organizer, I think I had this opportunity um, to change jobs a little bit within Waterfront Partnership at a t at a very um, instrumental time. Um, this time that you know Sally and Jovi, you wrote this paper reimagining Baltimore, and I hope you, you will. I'm sure you'll talk on that mm -hmm. later. But um, I was offered this job as events director at the same time thinking about what does the what, what could the harbor be a, how can we reimagine the inner harbor at the same time there is a new developer um, at harbor place pavilions and I think years ago I may not have been so um, engaged in this issue at the harbor but I, I think I've grown to think that it's really a reflection of our city itself, and there's an opportunity to use some of these community organizing principles and activities and community leaders in this larger um, process. And I think Baltimore by Baltimore was born out of uh, using this producer model, like in communities we call it train the trainer, or this this um, idea that we're passing the mic to a community leader or artist, professional, you know, neighbor, one of our neighbors, to and ask, we, what do you want to do? What what do you think would make this better? Um, and so the model B by B, it's a series of six music and makers festivals that go from July, or excuse me, June to November. And each one is sort of curated by a different producer that showcases the best talent in their network through their eyes. Um, so the idea is that we can truly reflect uh, mm -hmm. Baltimore back at itself at the Inner Harbor. And that, that's the vision for, for, for me for Baltimore by Baltimore. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. The brilliance, I think, of the Baltimore by Baltimore model, Leanna, is just that, this trust to basically have Waterfront Partnership say, we'll take care of the infrastructure, <laughs> you know, where the stage is and where, you know, the tables and posters. but you know, it's a huge uh, faith walk with our, with Baltimore, you know, to say like, this, this city um, is, you know, has genius and treasures and talent and that's um, under elevated and uh, that if we, you know, it's kind of like call, you know, put the call out and, um, and allow people to really lean into um, trusting in that space and um, filling it with you know those creative expressions and I just think it was every uh, weekend was a unique mm -hmm. kind of celebratory <clears throat> um, example of you know the diversity the rich layers the hard work the skill level all of that kind of from entrepreneurs to makers to performers um, so I think it really really illustrated that um, that trust and you know kind of decentralizing like what, what can happen in that space was mm -hmm. really validated you know and it kind of just was an almost embarrassing riches of people yeah yeah and it, it you mentioned the paper that Joby and I mm -hmm. worked on I felt like Baltimore by Baltimore really um, embodied and expressed, you know, a lot of those principles in that we wrote the, an op-ed piece, right, in 2021, and then got all this reaction to it, and then incorporated a lot of those opinions and, and ideas and creativity into the paper that came out in January um, last year. And uh, so 
you know, it's, it's this trusting and believing that there's all this, um, you know, intelligence and creativity and um, ability out there in the community. And, and, you know, we tried to bring it into our paper, but you actually made it, you know, you made it happen in a physical way, in space and time. And um, every show, there was, you know, a number of acts that blew me away. I mean, I've, I've, I've never been to a whole series of events in Baltimore that had that level mm -hmm. of, um, of talent, you know, and it's the opposite of going to, you know, see some big star that you already know. Okay. It's seeing people that you've never heard of, you never suspected, and just making, it's almost more um, exciting than seeing something you already um, expect to be great, because mm -hmm. you're just surprised and amazed by it. Mm -hmm. That's great. That is great. And uh, being able to attend, be there, observe, and, you know, get, a, get, on, a, get on the stage. I got on the stage. Mm -hmm. I, I was uh, dragged mm -hmm. on the stage. All <laughs> of my frame was dragged on the stage. And it's like, hey, we're going to do an impromptu podcast. I was like, oh, this is a very Baltimore moment we're having mm -hmm. right now. Exactly. But it, it, it felt authentic. You know, mm -hmm. that's Thank the you. thing that really stuck out about it um, overall for me, and being there, seeing people that I know. And, yes, yeah, you were touching on a thing there where it's – it's folks like that I don't know well, but it's like I want to have that invitation to learn more about their work and what they're doing. Mm -hmm. um, I'm a coffee snob, and I went over there, and it's like this coffee truck that was there, and I was like, who are you? What do you do? What is this about? Mm -hmm. And we exchanged cards, and I've tried this coffee, and I was like, oh, this is great. Mm -hmm. And I wouldn't have had that experience. Maybe I would have eventually found them on social media, but you know, being able to go down there and go to sort of you know, the, the waterfront area to the, the inner harbor and be able to see all of these interesting people doing and having a lot of fun, it just felt like an authentic experience. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. True. So in, in being down, this is just kind of up for grabs. You know, like if you watch like basketball, you see like the tip off at the beginning. <laughs> it's, it's just, it's that. Um, so since it's, you know, taking place down there in the inner harbor, it's a tourist area, high traffic area, lots of different people and you know, it's going to be during the baseball season. It was last year during the baseball season. Mm -hmm. So there's a lot of different people there. Let's talk about the harbor's future and in what ways, like, can BXB and creative thinking, Baltimore, Baltimore, and creative thinking and, and practices, um, you know, source from Baltimore, like the people that are of Baltimore that are kind of, like, doing a lot of this programming, supporting a lot of this programming, how can that influence, like, the harbor's, like, redevelopment, this reimagining? Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Well, speaking of basketball, I think we got to get Angel Reese down. <laughs> <laughs> She's such a, a, a remarkable person and player. Um, well, I'll kick it off, and I think um, mm -hmm. Jody and Lana have a lot to add, but um, I've been working with a group of other programs that um, provide training for entrepreneurs and leaders in Baltimore. and. We have got such an ecosystem supporting social entrepreneurship in the city, yeah. and you know you'll see bits and pieces of it here and there. But if we were able to bring those folks, you know, those who have businesses, services that are, would be appropriate down at the harbor, really connect up this work that's going on all over the city, serving a lot of different folks, and, and you know, drawing on a lot of different talents, and have that be part of the harbor's future, not you know the big chain <laughs> um, stores that just tend over time to, see, to kind of lose energy and, and um, not really add to the local economy or the local culture. So that's a piece of it that I um, think a lot about and am hoping that as the, um, the new developer and you know, all the folks working with him um, at city and state you know, are prioritizing what should happen here, a priority should be um, supporting local, local entrepreneurs, specifically social entrepreneurs. Thank you. Mm -hmm. um, I'll, I'll jump in. Um, I think to your earlier question about creativity and imagination, you know, I really do believe that um, you know, Baltimore exists differently in all of our imaginations. It's been reimagined a number of times in its history in like transformative ways. And um, I all the signs, if you're standing on Fed Hill or you're walking in, all the signs are really that this is a, a generational moment. Um, and I would, that when you think about the, the buildings that have emptied out down around the harbor and the way the skyline has shifted to, to the east and 
the really formative kind of uprisings around social equity and um, anti-racism and things in the city with its past, that this is a, a transformational moment that I wouldn't even say it's a generational moment. It's at least <clears throat> back to the 60s and 70s when the highways were stopped mm -hmm. and the urban, you know, and then the harbor became Port to Harbor. So we're in a moment <clears throat> like that. And what I would like to, you know, kind of my mantra is that it's not just a rare moment in terms of timing, but that it's kind of a crucible moment. It's a moment where we can either, you know, just perpetuate those kind of divisions and hierarchies and not really address, you know, the restorative needs that we have for the city, the opportunity to bring all our communities in. We can just build new buildings and kind of move into a next moment for Baltimore. But so it's a crucible moment in the sense I think it's like test our metal. You know, like can we lean in to the values and ethical aspects of what it means to think of Baltimore as people, as opposed to buildings, as opposed to development in an abstract kind of design way. So I think Baltimore by Baltimore was like a great festival series, but the reason it ought to be centered and is that it's, it really illustrates the kind of process that it has those values of authenticity, of local generative economies, of you know, embracing diversity and belonging in kind of really inclusive way. It has those infused into it. So if we can kind of th think about how what we do in that space can lead all of those kind of entrepreneurial ventures and social entrepreneurial and learning and restorative, mm -hmm. then I think that feels to me like the key. Can we lean in and let that happen um, from a values-driven, people-centered uh, way. And uh, so I don't know what the what will be. I mean, I hope it has less highways downtown and I hope it has easier access and certain things like that. But I'm wide open to what it could be as long as it's values driven. Um, that's what I'd love to see as a Baltimore. Same. I mean, I 100% agree with that. The restorative opportunity, values driven. Um, the process including more than just developers and you know thinking of community stakeholders East and West Baltimore I think of you know uh, we know that the Inner Harbor is a, is a place where tourists come to right that like if you haven't never visited Baltimore so I think it's important um, that you know, even from a tourist angle, like you, you want to go to a city to see its authentic mm -hmm. self. You want right. to see what's made there, what's cool there, how people dress there, like what's the music, mm -hmm. you know. And I think that that in order to be cool, it needs to reflect both. It needs to mm -hmm. have um, pride in order for it to reflect and connect to community. Community has to feel pride and like they've been involved in the work and the decisions and the process so um, yeah it just all has to happen at the same time to, in order to be what we want it to be and I, then I think there's a lot of people on the fringe like who maybe live in the you know in the areas around Baltimore City who like might come back like that local that uh, mm -hmm. local tourists or that regional tourists, I think that there is a, a lot that we could do there to for, for Baltimore's account, economy is to get them back coming and feeling good and welcome and safe and, and like it's mm -hmm. the cool spot to be. After every VYV I would go home and just spend hours looking up new music and new, you know, new vintage um, sellers and I mean it was just endless to the amount of good stuff. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah, I, can, I can say from the I, I guess being an evangelist for Baltimore, uh, <laughs> whenever, whenever I go traveling, whether it's up to you know Philly, New Orleans, I'll be back there soon. I definitely talk to people talking about all of the stuff that happens there because it's not a lot of information. So when I go down there to let's say New Orleans, in this year alone, it was down there in January, I had four people come up just based on conversations they had with me. And they were like, yeah, I'm visiting BMO. And I was like, don't call it that. <laughs> uh, you know, I said, able to visit. And, you know, we're able to, you know, go to different businesses, check out different places here, and get a real true sense of it. And I think going back to sort of the, the notion about authenticity, 
If you're going to a place you want to see, who are the people there? I'm hearing that these are the demographics of the place. I don't really see that. Well, right. Baltimore by Baltimore really did have that, and mm -hmm. I think that mm -hmm. that's something that's really, really cool. Mm -hmm. um, I have a follow-up question for Leah, though. Mm -hmm. um, for, for those who are undipped, uh, could you give a few examples of some of the programming? Mm -hmm. um, yeah. Sure. Uh so our producers last year, we uh, worked with Terrell Brown of the Artist Navigator Network. So he's really great at like plugging into emerging and professional artists into a larger series. Mm -hmm. So he was just, it was great to work with him and help. He's sort of recommended um, different leaders to pull in. And he led us to um, Big Fred, who is a comedian. And he does all this amazing work in schools. Um, working with youth and using humor sort of as a way to process and um, he's such a positive just amazing MC and fun guy um, he brought in black star and different artists that that really just you could feel the vibe mm -hmm. of the harbor just alive um, led from Fred into Keith Colston who is a native uh, he's a tribesman um, who did this amazing perf uh, performance and traditional dance with traditional regalia and mixed mm -hmm. African drumming in with the native drumming and it was just this whole heart it felt like a heartbeat um, and, and really we talked he talked a lot about how um, different cultures ca are you know connect through our music um, that was a really special moment. Uh, Lady Brian with the Black Arts District mm -hmm. was incredible. This year we'll um, we have well actually it's kind of, <laughs> there's a, some good surprises that will oh, that will that. be coming right up. But also a lot a lot that will reflect back of um, you know the different cultures in Baltimore. You know Latin heritage will be a sneak peek um, and some jazz perhaps, which is very exciting. Baltimore has a historic important jazz scene, um, so. Just a, a, glossing over that a little bit. <laughs> oh, a teaser. No. <laughs> but yeah, um, thank you. And um, I can definitely attest. That's who pulled me on stage. It was a combination of Fred and Larry. What up? Like, mm -hmm. yeah, Rob, you got to go up there. You're, you're interviewing Larry. I mean, um, you're interviewing Fred right now. I was like, I barely met him. <laughs> I was like, I need, I need more prep for this. But um, definitely. <laughs> both of them actually just really cool MCs when I was um, mm -hmm. over there trying to you know set up and do a podcast at I think it was the I think it was one of the latter ones maybe been the next to last um, an event um, I'm over there and I'm like I have my gear I'm trying to do and I was like there's club music happening I can mm -hmm. get an interview with this <laughs> and Larry comes over there he's like Rob Lee over here and I was like what are we doing I was like why are you just like DJ radio miking me right now <laughs> but it just was a really cool scene and seeing you know, kind of people shake it up to some mm -hmm. club music I was playing in the background. Yeah, like, yeah. This is not I, expected. I, I wanted to um, mention the dancing mm -hmm. because that was a mm -hmm. really a way for everybody there who wanted to to participate in it. Mm -hmm. And there were some um, just incredible dancers who showed up, you know, time and time again. Yeah. And uh, I just, I just like came to anticipate them and want to see them again. But then anybody who wanted to could jump in the little kids with the hula hoops mm -hmm. that you guys provided. Um, so it had that very, mm -hmm. um, you know, that very participatory, welcoming hometown feel to it. At the same time, you're seeing, you know, some really, you know, national, international talent. Yeah. When I saw um, meeting Keith Colston, you know, and uh, who's a Lumbee, uh, you know, citizen, and um, realizing through works of, like Ashley Minner and other mm -hmm. local <clears throat> folks who have begun to tell the story of uh, Native American history and migration and stuff here in Baltimore and I'm um, having those uh, dances I mean you know I grew up in uh, northeast Oklahoma and you know dance powwow circuit when I was, I was like there were Oklahoma dancers you know right there on the, the harbor corner hmm. and um, the combination you know one of feeling like a sense of belonging and connection but but the, also the sense of like I don't know that this is this kind of moment has happened here before, like mm -hmm. because this kind of pulling in, you know, it would you can't ever be really comprehensive. How many years of B by B would it take yeah. to be culturally comprehensive of the diversity that makes up who we are, but um, still bringing in 
um, communities and people who um, help really turn that story into a more and more rich tapestry, you know, mm -hmm. and um, give the mic. Yeah, yeah mm -hmm. he told powerful, powerful stories that day. Yeah. I forgot to mention Media Rhythm Institute. That were just mm -hmm. that, that was one of my favorite shows as well. Just, they did they do a lot of work with youth um, youth media, and they had these uh, uh, the bad dancers, the ballerinas were just incredible mm -hmm. to oh see. Mm -hmm. um, that whole day was just one after the next of all stars. Right on the paver stones there. Mm -hmm. it's, uh, yeah. This elegant, it's great. beautiful. Yeah. So I have, I have one more real question, and of course, it's not a truth in our podcast, but the rapid fire question, so I got some <laughs> as well. But um, so this this last one, um, we often hear about impact, right? And I want to add this extra like layer of context to it. Um, you know, I, I'm really into pop culture. I like movies, right? Mm -hmm. And you know, you'll see a movie it's like, man, that movie was really good. You know, it was really great. And then it's like, we're not doing a sequel because it didn't make two billion dollars. Mm -hmm. And they say, well, that's the impact, but it has like cultural significance. So in sort of like this lens of events and, and, and events around the community and for the community and of the community, how would you define impact as it relates to Baltimore by Baltimore? Mm. Well, we did. Um survey folks who were coming through mm -hmm. um, with a lot of help from our students and Waterfront Partnership and others. Um, and so I think what part of the impact that we saw on the, on the people who were attending first was just this this sense of joy and surprise like this was happening, <laughs> right? Because the harbor's been, you know, felt like things weren't going so well for a while. So to see all these people and this energy and this talent come together was phenomenal, and a lot of people had not planned to be there. Yeah. They were just, you know, like you said, there's baseball games, people walking by, they live nearby. By chance, they come across this thing, and they are, um, you know, wonderfully surprised by it. And I think it, you know, I think just pulling people in, and and that experience being a rewarding one was, to me, one of the the greatest impacts that we saw. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Yeah, definitely. I would agree with that. I think I'm in this like fundraising, you know, whirlwind right now for BYB. And I think, you know, at the end of the day, it, like we are one impor important part is that we're paying the producer, we're paying the artists, and the artists pay their talent. And so we need to raise a good amount of money for that. And I think one success is is raising the money, right, and covering covering the costs. And then wouldn't it be great if even we raise the money for the event and then also like had some extra to do some like more programming around or you know so I think that is a, a measure beyond just seeing people feel um, an, attached and like again more pride for the, the Inner Harbor and this iconic you know Baltimore's most iconic outdoor stage like it really is this beautiful um, place. Mm -hmm. I mean I, I mostly think that uh, we we really got to have a long game, play a long game here. It can't just be how many people mm -hmm. were there mm -hmm. on such and such a day. And um, you know, when you're really trying to do uh, or hoping for more transformative change that involves core values and process of community engagement, and these are things that you know you can't just do in that way so you know it means understanding those what those values are setting processes in place trusting stories that come out and I think some of the, um, some of those pieces probably won't be evidence-based in a traditional you know we just really mm -hmm. authenticity for example like I mean maybe we can measure that but mm -hmm. you know it's whether it's a question or not you know like we, we shouldn't necessarily put every value up to the mm -hmm. impact evidence question like some of them is like we're we got to push some chips in on restorative inclusion of communities we got to push some chips in on authentic cultural expressions so mm -hmm. um that didn't really answer your question except i'd, I'd say like we got to somehow develop some trust in a long vision and the values that are driving it. And I think you did. You, you, long game, long game. That's the thing that mm -hmm. stuck out to me. So uh, I like the, mm -hmm. the extra background. Um, so that's kind of it for the real podcast. 
that's going to get weird. Um, <laughs> I, I, I'll be honest when I say that. Uh, so, um, we're, we're, you know, weird is good. Think, we're good. We're good. Don't, <laughs> don't overthink the questions. Don't <laughs> um, and it's kind of this sort of I said what I said. Yeah, it's like no take backsies, as it were. Uh, so, so here's the first one. We're gonna go go from um, from uh, Sally to Leanne. Um, so here's the first one. If you could only select one topping on your pizza, what is that? Mushroom. Let's go. I love cheese. <laughs> Gotta have it. I mean, mushrooms and cheese. How do you go wrong? <laughs> Third, I, green peppers. Oh, mm. Yeah, we put our pizzas together now. <laughs> That's almost like a supreme, right? Yeah, <laughs> close. Um, next one. Um, what is your most often used emoji? Mm -hmm. mm. I, uh, I like the one, the smile with the sunglasses. <laughs> it's a cool emoji, I think. That's what pops up. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Actually, the sunglass emoji. <laughs> That's funny. I'd like to choose something different, but I mean, we've worked together too much. certainly say it. Yeah, I'm hitting it all the time. Mm. <laughs> I am all about the hard eyes emoji. Oh, is it right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Nice. <laughs> if, um, if you were to have one superpower for 24 hours, what would it be? Mm. Mm. Wow. Mm. Yeah, they're getting harder, by the I way. Think, uh, for me, flying. I just, I love birds. I love, I love watching them fly. I'd love mm. to be up there with them. Yeah, I'm gonna go. I'm gonna go underwater with the fly. <laughs> I would love to be able to. I'm a swimmer mm. um, for just exercise and things, but I would love to be able to move under the water. Yeah. I would like to see into the future. Mm. Wow. I, be, I, I know scary. it could be scary. Yeah, yeah. It could be scary. May regret that. <laughs> and here's the the very last one. Um, since we're we're coming up on it and uh, to tie it all together with uh, Baltimore by Baltimore is so, a Big summertime oriented, and you know, people outside. Mm -hmm. What is your favorite summertime activity? Mm. Mm. I have to say, it. <laughs> <laughs> um, well, it, it does. I love swimming in a particular lake. That's that's mm -hmm. it. It just the water is so beautiful, the setting, and that just feels perfect to me. <laughs> Since um, basically at the beginning of. COVID, I got a little kayak and I started re-seeing Baltimore mm. from the water. So I love putting in across it like Middle Branch mm. and that mix of industrial areas and natural areas. So getting on the water with my little kayak. Yeah, it's Baltimore Blue Way coming our way. Come on. Um, I love tubing in the gunpowder. Mm. Like Cold. tubing is really my little walk a little bit up the NCR trail and tube mm. down. Uh -huh. Mm. So it's, it's water is a theme. Right? It is. Yeah, uh, yeah I like the harbor itself. Yeah. <laughs> so, in these in these final moments, um, I want to like uh, thank you all for coming on mm -hmm. and spending some time with me. And uh, on this video, by the way, you know, thank you all for clap yourselves up for coming on this video. <laughs> but, uh, um, uh, shameless plugs, I guess. Um, you anything you want to share in this final moments? Um, social media, website, anything along those lines. I just love, love people to take a look at our community leadership program at UMBC. Um, you know, you've, you've taken a course in our program. You know what we have to offer. Uh, it's a phenomenal group of people. We've, um, we've brought in some great faculty. And I think um, whether you want to take one course, pursue a whole degree, um, you know, there's a great range available to you. So mm -hmm. it was a great course that I took. Uh, I, I learned a lot. I uh, was able to revisit some things. And the, the digital storytelling is just i always find something new I got out of that experience. And I think even that, even when it being something that's more on the visual side, mm -hmm. um, I was able to look at how I go about storytelling from an audio side, and now we're doing this video, but as, mm -hmm. in an audio side as well. So I think it's something that, even from a critique standpoint, I just took a lot out of that course. Wonderful. Mm -hmm. It's great. And I'm, you know, I've been at UMBC for uh, 20 years now, and uh, just I really think it's also an exceptional place, and um, it's in a moment of really important uh, kind of change. We got a new president at the university, and I'm very hopeful that um, this kind of community-engaged learning and community collaboration is going to be part of UMBC's vision, both as a place where people are learning and the institution's kind of getting involved. So, UMBC, be a retriever. Mm -hmm. <laughs> be a retriever.
Um, I would say check out Waterfront Partnership on our Instagram page. Keep an eye on what we do. I think there's a lot of exciting things coming up from creating a water trail to increase Baltimore's public access to our inner harbor so we could get on and float around mm -hmm. and know where to get out. Um, to other great events that we're doing with a similar approach. One is this weekend, or we'll do a series of um, skate days at the new Rash Field, which is oh, a park great. we're really proud mm -hmm. of at the south side of the Inner Harbor, and uh, just pairing up a little younger children with pro skaters to give lessons and partner with other, you know, Skate Park of Baltimore. So that same sort of process of pulling from different communities around. Um, so keep an eye on all of the fun events yeah. coming. <laughs> <laughs> well, there you have it, folks. I want to again thank Sally J. Scott, Joby Taylor, and Leanna Wetmore for coming on to the mm -hmm. podcast. And I'm Rob Lee saying there's art, culture, creativity, communities, everything. And around <laughs> Baltimore, you've just got to look for it. <laughs> <laughs>